Bridget. That's more is bad luck, isn't it? An insult. Today of all days. Excuse me. There's nobody at reception? That's because I'm here. Oh, I have an appointment. Oh, you're a bit older than I expected. Still, you've still got it flaunted, eh? I beg your pardon. Here we are, in we go. Mr. Carnegie. Oh, he's left, and look, he's taken over, won't be able to later. I think there's been a mistake. Although, I, I asked for a selection from your shop, so it's bound to be something in your size. I'll uh, leave you to it. Listen, the phone is ringing off the hook. I'm on my way, Matron. Ah, uh, and while you're at it, I'm a bit busy. I want this office cleared. And a pot of strong tea with sliced lemon on my desk by the time Matron's are showing me around the hospital. Allow me to introduce myself. Jean McAteer, Mr. Carnegie's replacement. You're meant to be a man. Welcome to the Royal, Mrs. McAteer. Miss. I can't wear these right. They're indecent. What do you think, Lizzie? I don't think we've been introduced. Matron? Uh, this is Jack, our head porter, and Alan, his assistant. Our new administrator, gentlemen. She did all you could that night, right? I tried to hold on to her, but I couldn't. I let her fall. I let her down. Who let her down? It was the coward who got her into trouble? He might as well have taken a knife to her neck. And I hope he rots in hell. I hope he rots in hell. Well spotted. What's that? Fracture of the superior heart of the ulna with a dislocation of the head of the radius. Uh, you've broken one of the bones in your arm, Ruby, and dislocated the other. You need an operation, I'm afraid. Stay here overnight. Nothing to worry about. The staff don't bite. At least not all of them. No. I won't. I can't. I'm afraid you have no choice. Bear room the theatre, please, nurse. Of course, Miss Rose. I'll be okay. Really, I made a promise that I'd look after Linda to my mum before she died. She'll be safe enough without you for a day or two. Come along. We'll be on our way, though. So soon for goodness sake, Paul. Well, I suspect you've got a fresh burn in your head, but I can't be sure without an X-ray. Look, um, let me run you to the nurse hospital. It's a two-hour drive. Not sure if there's any doctrine to be done. Would you mind doing it? Not at all. It doesn't appear to be this place, so, um, yes, let me strap it up for you. Uh, excuse me, do you have a first aid kit? Yes, uh, I'll get it for you. Losing a mum at her age can't be easy. Full one of general practice. Don't get involved. All heart, aren't you? And that's a patient get to me once. Won't make that mistake again. So, you retreat into anaesthetics where all your patients tend to be unconscious. I specialized a couple of years ago. Put the rigors of general practice way behind me. Was that for you, eh? Probably first to find the dealing with a never ending stream of tedious and embarrassing illnesses like the glamour. Specialization in centers of excellence, that's the future. Small, uneconomic, inefficient hospitals like this, in a few years' time, they'll be confined to the history books. I sincerely hope not, Doctor. Although Mr. Rose speaks very highly of you all. Keep the dressing dry. You should make an appointment for 
the operations today in a couple of weeks. See you in the theater, Ellis. Poor Ruby. An operation is all she needs at the moment. She's a little bit insecure. Uh, she's reluctant to leave her sister, certainly. If you'll excuse me. Or can you blame her? Considering her background. It's a very sad case, Doctor. The mother died addicted to barbiturates. There's no father to be found. And, and they were neglected when the mother went to work. Well, let's just say she had a very active social life down the harbour road. Right, but they sort of leave you again. Well, child welfare couldn't home them, so, so they came to us. And Ruby has great potential. She's a, she's a real talent for literature. I'm hoping to enter her for a scholarship at the school where I teach. I think they finally began to trust us. Think of the house as their home. Well, they did until this wretched fire. I don't know what we'll do now. Maybe we'll get moved somewhere else. Linda, sweetheart, not now. Tomorrow no one pretends to be our mum and dad. That's enough. Mr. and Mrs. Wegmans are fine when he sees it. It's urgent. Smoking material. I've no idea, so I left it in there as usual, ready for my post operative pipe. I think I might have moved it. Well, tell us where it is now, so we'll proceed. The incinerator, along with the other rubbish. You. You've met Carol, our new theatre nurse. And resident Hell's Angel, complete with skin tight leather accoutrements and a motorcycle. Really, nurse? It was my dad's. And there's no reason why a woman can't ride a bike. You made your feelings on the subject perfectly clear. The charmless epithet hurled in our direction was male chauvinist beak. I had that pipe for 40 years. Man and boy. That pipe went fought in Korea. I'll leave you to it, nurse. We should be getting back to you and Ashley up at 7 in the morning, that's why, sister. Well, the doctors are not going to come back straight away. To stay and have Ashley settle in here. I can't let her go. She belongs here, where her mother grew up. Well, it's what we were both hoping for. Such a lovely baby. I do hope you'll stay in touch. Well, it was good of you both to come. All right, then, so we'll see you back at the wall. Are being left next to a pile of fabric. Are you saying that it was started deliberately? Oh, that was ridiculous. Why would any of our children want to set fire to their home? If they have, that would make it arson. I'd have to inform the police. No. Linda, what have you done? Me? Don't be stupid. You're jealous of the attention that Ruby gets, aren't you? All her extra tuition for the scholarship. I hate you. I hate both of you. <laughs> Falling apart. So when you've calmed yourself down, 